Well, I've been promising you this all day. You know, when some conservative calls up and goes, well, you know, we need a little survival of the fittest here. You know, it's just, you know, Congress not extending unemployment benefits. It's just a fine thing. Those people should be weeded out of the gene pool. Right. Did Darwin really say that? Let's ask David Loy, the psychologist, evolutionary systems scientist, founder of the Darwin Project. The website is thedarwinproject.com, author of many books, his latest, Darwin in Love, the rest of the story, and his personal website, David Loy, L O Y E dot com. Uh, Professor Loy, it's great to talk with you again. Well, it's great to be here, Tom. Thank As, you. Uh, uh, yeah. <laughs> Thank- I, I, I have to tell you, though, I. This is my initial flight on Skype, and I feel like I, I'm, I'm, I feel like I'm an astronaut, all with all these instruments around me, taking off for the moon. So, <laughs> well, it if seems I fumble a little. Uh, please excuse me. <laughs> no, it seems to be working just fine. And, and okay, uh, great. Yeah, you're the John Glennon for the day, and and he did a fine job too. So, tell us what what is wrong with this story that we all learned in high school, and that. Uh, and that was then regurgitated by economists that Charles Darwin said that uh, only the fittest survive and that and that evolution was really all about um, the strongest crushing the weakest and eventually uh, thus strengthening the gene pool uh, or the uh, body politic or the body economic and all, it all works out for the best. Well, that's only half it's a half truth. It's a, it isn't even a half truth. That's only half of what Darwin really set out and wrote and did the research for, for and was trying to convey. And that's been ignored for a hundred years, over a hundred years. Though a lot of scientists now, uh, European um, and Asian as well as American leading scientists, are endorsing and pushing what I'm uh, what I've uncovered. And what I've uncovered is the rest of Darwin, a, uh, uh, in which he moves on. It, 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 it's all there in quotes. Uh, the most dramatic thing I've found to get it across quickly is the 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 difference. See, I did this uh, study of, um, of of the of the descent of man. I was I was a co- I was a co-founder of two international organizations for the study of advanced research on evolution. And uh, it came to me that uh, we were all doing this, and I, I got no sense that anybody had ever bothered to read Darwin other than just plug it in. Mm-hmm. So one night I took a copy of, I had an automated copy, a computerized copy of The Descent of Man, ran some word counts, and I found that he only wrote twice about survival of the fittest. In the descent of man, which he tells us, I'm now moving on to the to human level, to our level. Right. He only writes twice. Once is to apologize, and in contrast, I I, I put in the word uh, love to see what would happen. He writes 95 times about love, and 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 and, and it, with with a single item in the index that is still in all the editions I know of used universally, one item in the index, 95 times he's writing about love. Wow. Now, the, the, the other thing, that uh, the other little simple set of statistics that really sort of slams it across and brings it uh, to life was that you, you, know, you take selfishness, all this stuff about selfish genes, you know, and, oh, you, we've got to support these, these predators because they're going to give us they're going to trickle down a little from the one percenters. We'll get a little of that, and you know that sort of thing. Well, you 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 go to selfishness, and you enter it in the in the the, auto, the computerized version. He says, "This is a direct quote." He says, "Selfishness is a base principle accounting for the low morality of savages." This is what he's writing. And base in, in his time meant a negative, a, a, a foul, an awful. Yeah, a base, yeah. A, a disgusting yeah. principle. And in contrast, I, I because I, I found that I was amazed at how many times he was talking about writing about something to do with morality, the moral, the moral right. sense, moral sensitivity, and so, so on. So he mentioned love 95 times. What was the context? What was he saying about love? 
Well, he was saying, what he really, in effect, wound up saying is, love is is one of the most is 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 one of the most powerful forces driving evolution hmm. and and um but on the the selfishness thing in contrast there he's writing 92 times about moral sensitivity so in effect he's 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 he's, he's saying to cut to the chase he's saying look natural selection variation that's that's well established, and and it's unfortunately it's been degraded into this idea of selfish, of the the virtue of selfishness. Yeah, yeah, the, so the, the, the survival of the fittest. But he says at our level of our human level of evolution, we move on, we we grow up, we we mature into. A, a higher order of, of and higher agencies. This is a direct quote. Higher agencies take over, and um, and I've, I've got the quote here. I can come back to it later. But mm -hmm. but he's he's saying that the uh, that the in effect here's here's a quick comparison. In effect, he's saying the first half of Darwin theory that I wrote out in Origin of Species is like the big rocket that shoves the rocket into space and breaks through. But he says the rest of the theory is like a secondary rack rocket that is then boosted and takes off and reaches the destination. The other doesn't reach the destination. The other death, <laughs> the destination of the other is death, suicide for the planet. Yeah. It's the, the, Darwin used the metaphor of rockets? No, no, no. Oh, that, that's, you are. That's, okay. that's me okay. uh, trying to get across on the behalf of this poor guy that was so misinterpreted and so mangled and right. misdirected all these years. So, uh, yeah, I uh, my understanding was that it was, uh, correct me if I'm wrong on the name, and I, I probably am, Herbert Spencer or somebody like that who was his nephew who basically took survival of the fittest and turned it into an economic theory? The phrase is from Spencer. Yeah. The only reason that Darwin ever used it was that Albert, uh, that Alfred Wallace, the other part of the theory of evolution, uh, Darwin was saying, in effect, you know, I'm having a hell of a time getting across this concept of natural selection and re interaction with variation. Right. What will I do? And, it, and so uh, Wallace says, well, use Spencer's term, survival of the fittest. He did. He did only oh. twice, and regretted ever using it. So Spencer originated the term, the economist, oh, yeah. and then yeah. and then Darwin used it. I thought it was either. Oh, that's fascinating. And but but basically, in the minute we have left here, David Loy, the essence of Darwin's message is that if humans are to evolve forward societally or even biologically, we have to do through so through cooperation and love. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the selfish and the selfishness is a counter evolutionary principle. Oh, yeah, very much so. Do we have more than one, one minute? No, we have about 30 seconds. Oh, gosh. It's all yours. That's a fair amount of time. Okay. Oh, okay, well, I, uh, last night watching the Olympics, I saw the whole thing right there, the first half and the second half. You see all these people, all these wonderful uh, uh, youngsters out there striving fighting against each other, you know, the winner against the loser and so on. But you see there's another side to it. You see a lot of hugging going on out there. Yep. You see this transcendent feeling of oneness and the gratitude. That yep. The, 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 the team, the support network, all those things. That's, that's br a brilliant observation. David Loy, uh, the websites are davidloy.com and thedarwinproject.com. Hang on just a second here. This is the Tom Hartman Program. His newest book, Darwin in Love, The Rest of the Story, available now. But David, thank you so much for being with us. It's available on all the online booksellers worldwide. There you go.